Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome everyone here this morning. I appreciate so much Ann and Pat playing. It's so meditative, isn't it? Just come in and relax a little bit. Um, got some information before we begin our service? Hey, all right. Two more. Okay. Let me give you an update on our food. We're collecting box dinners this month. We got them all stacked up here. I hope we get some pictures right after our service. And um, let me give you the update here. Maybe I'm just being opportunistic, but here's what we got. Uh, between the two services, we now have 497 boxes. So isn't that great? 497 boxes. <laughs> So am I being opportunistic to think, dang, we're just three boxes short of 500. So anyway, we're looking. Anybody comes in, make sure they got hamburger helper, and we'll get it down here right away. So, um, But that is great work. I appreciate our church doing that much. Uh, we got everything set up here, uh, like I said, for pictures. And um, right after our service, Valley View will be here with a truck to get everything picked up because they always know we'll have quite a bit of food that will make it worth their while. Um, but what we need is help. So if you could stay around for a little bit right after the service and just get everything into boxes. We've got some boxes over here and get it ready to be put on the truck. That will help. So if you can just stay for a little bit. We have a bunch of people doing that. It goes very quickly. So that would be appreciated. So anyway, great work, church. And um, let me see. If you have pew pads in your pews, or you have pew pads in your pews, uh, please fill those in. Pass them along. If you have any updated information Anything to get to our office, whatever it may be, this is the best way to do it. Just jot it down here, and we'll get it passed to our office and get all that information moving along. And uh, we have some visitors with us this morning. Um, we have someone kind of new. Uh, this used to be Judy Bauer up here. She's now Judy Jordan. Yeah. They successfully were married. We did it. Okay. <laughs> And Lee is a great man of faith. He got her name tag two years ago, a year ago. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> by faith, Lee knew eventually they were going to get hitched, and he was ready. So that was part of the romantic part, giving her a new name tag. So anyway, uh, congratulations here. And um, uh, visitors, we have, uh, I have one listed here. Bill Huntenberg. Am I close? Oh, there we are. That Bill, hi. <laughs> Heard you've been dating our Flossie Smith here. <laughs> we'll have to talk to Z. <laughs> Flossie, we've gone that far. Uh, Flossie uh, called me yesterday and said she's engaged. And so they've got a wedding date coming up. Was it April 10? 4. God, May 4, okay, coming up. So anyway, congratulations. So, Bill, good to meet you. <laughs> so, and um, are there any other announcements that we have? Nothing else to be mentioned? Take a moment. Just breathe a little bit. Just relax a little bit. You're here now. You're in the house of God. You're in God's presence. That's why we've come to be aware of our Lord, to realize His presence with us. Just have that moment, that little time, when God has an opportunity to speak to us, to touch us, to bring us healing, wisdom, new direction, courage, strengthen our faith, whatever these needs may be. Let us be very aware that our Lord God is with us.
I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank the person who knew I was going to be up here. They put my box up here for me to stand on. I invite you to stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Glory the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We we must Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another lovely day. The sun is there. We feel its warmth. We smell the rain in the air. Be with us as we come to worship you today. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we would be mindful and prayerful for those Christians who are not as lucky as we are, for those who are being tortured and slaughtered throughout this world for your sake. Bless those, forgive those who do to them the things they do, for they know not what they do. In Jesus' name, we ask it for the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm going to turn this over to Anne. She has some good music for us. And join her, please. You may be seated. Jesus says, cast all your cares on me. No matter how we're feeling, what happens in our lives, he's just waiting for us to ask him for his help. So we have that confidence that he hears us whenever we call on his name.
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it feels good to worship in God's presence, doesn't it? It's baseball season. It's here. Last Sunday, I talked a little bit about the Diamondbacks. They got a special concession, 18-inch long corn dog filled with bacon, cheese, comes with french fries, deep fried, also comes with a 10% discount to your physician for a cholesterol checkup after you're done. <laughs> Chicago White Sox have responded to this. You go up to Comiskey Park this summer, get yourself a Sunday. They've got a Sunday special, 12 scoops, three pounds of ice cream with banana, caramel sauce, strawberry sauce, chocolate syrup, cherries, and whipped cream, of course. And then uh, Texas Rangers, they've got a special going on. They just cut right to the chase. Here we go. Talk about cholesterol. They, you can buy for $7 a three-quarter inch thick slice of bacon that's deep fried <laughs> on a stick. There you go. I understand they also give you a serving of grease. You can dip the bacon in the grease and eat that right on in there. So, yeah, all these things you can get. But is it good for our body? I don't know. This kind of worries me a little bit. We have to be careful what we bring into our body and take care of it. And I don't want to be too hypocritical, but notice I am pulling my jacket around my stomach here. <laughs> but being healthy, taking care of ourselves. Whenever we eat bad food, what happens to our body? <laughs> you kind of get this kind of a situation. and We have to pay attention. Eating healthy food, eating better food, cutting out the fat, cutting out the cholesterol, cutting out these things. We have a better body. We will be healthier. We will live a better quality life for many long years. Same thing is true with our mind. If you read terrible, trashy things that are depressed and bring you down all the time, how's your outlook on life going to be? It's going to be down and trashy and depressed and so forth. But bring good things into your mind. Think better. You'll have a better outlook. You'll be much more optimistic. Have a clean mind. Have a healthy mind. And the same thing is true with our spirit. If we leave our spirit devoid without any care, without spending that time with God, we're going to be very weak and wimpy in a heavenly sense. But we take our time. We spend time in prayer. We spend time appreciating God, be in worship, being recognizing that God's presence is with us. That's how our spirit becomes strong. That's how our soul becomes very healthy. The time that we devote to our Lord, that's when he fills us up. That's when he gives us wisdom and strength and courage and all these things we need to face life. And communion is another one of those times. We take in good things into ourselves. I know the wafer and the cup are, are just a small portion of things, but it's not so much to fill us up physically, but to fill us up spiritually. These are symbols of the very presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that we bring into ourselves. How very special and important that is. We take care of our spiritual diet. During our communion time, recognize that the presence of our Lord Jesus is with us. Our communion hymn is, there's something about that name. Hymn number 115, it'll also be up on the wall. Let's prepare ourselves for communion with our Lord Jesus.
Jesus in the upper room with his disciples. This was a very personal, very intimate time. Jesus is alone with his disciples to explain one more time what his death means. This time he uses object lessons to explain. He takes the bread that is at the table and he breaks it before them. And he teaches us that this broken loaf has a message for it teaches us of Jesus' own body that is broken there upon the cross. And Jesus took a cup of the fruit of the vine. And here is one more lesson. This cup represents the very blood of our Lord Jesus that is shed on our behalf, behalf there at the cross of Calvary. Jesus takes care of all things for us, opens up the doors of forgiveness, salvation, invites us into the family of God. What wonderful blessing this is. What wonderful opportunity. As we partake of these emblems, let us realize the great price that has been paid on our behalf and what has been provided for us in Jesus Christ. Our dear the Heavenly Father, we come to thee in love, in awe, in thankfulness. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the privilege of being here to worship together and to be able to share this table together. Open our hearts and minds to the realization of what a sacrifice Christ made for us. Bless us as we take the bread, which represents his body, and the wine, which represents his blood, his sacrifice for us, that we might have eternal life. Thank you, O God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
another change in our culture that was reported just this week. Wells Fargo did the study and Reuters news agency followed up on uh, presenting it to us. It used to be the three taboo subjects you never talk about when you're at a party or social gathering was, do you remember them? Politics, sports, or religion. You just stayed away from those. They've got a new list. Now it's the top four things you don't talk about uh, when you're in a social gathering. I'll take them from the bottom up. How about that? 32% of Americans report that the subjects you don't talk about in a social gathering, number four is religion. In a church, we'll give you an exception there. It's okay to talk about religion here. We'll, we'll get away with it all right. Number three at 35% is politics. We can appreciate that. There's a new one at number two, death. Americans don't like to talk about death. 38% reported that. But that was at number one. There's a new number one that wasn't even in the original list. Coming in at 44%, mind you, 44% of Americans don't like to talk about this subject. Personal finance. We don't like talking about our money. Some of that has to do with the 2008 recession with the real estate market that crashed. And it's just not a good subject. Our stock portfolio is really tanked and we're still suffering there. It's hard to deal with. But our offering time, this is the time when it's between you and God. It's not a matter of you and your neighbor, but it's you and God. To talk to God about this. Just say, Lord, uh, my stock portfolio did really tank and we are still struggling with some of these things. But I want to give my offering to you. I still want to be active. I don't want to be dormant. I don't want to give up. I want to be very involved in what you're doing. We collect our offering this morning. Let it between, be between you and God, but let it be your heart's desire here that you want to participate in what God is doing in our world. You want to support that message of his love for a very needy world. Lord, we thank you for this lovely day that you have given us, a day in which to express our love and appreciation for the great gifts you have given us. We recognize your power and your generous love and support. We offer these gifts as token of our appreciation, and we ask that they be used to further your plans and help those among us who are in need and in pain. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. 
come to our prayer time during our service and um, just to update you on a few items. Um, we want to pray for our food and just pray God's blessings be upon it. Valley View Food Pantry will be... <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Four ninety eight, four ninety nine, five hundred. Okay. I was trying to send hand signals to my wife. Go get them. So thank you. We made that number. So what a very great goal that is. So um, and I appreciate our church. Knows what's important. And uh, know to place it up front. Part of our worship is how we serve other people and just take care of God's people. Um, our next food item, just to let you know, uh, will be canned beans. Uh, we talked to Jesse at Valley View, and they said they're very low on the high-protein side of the uh, uh, menu, what they try to give people when they come. So beans is what we're going for. That'd be kidney beans, northern beans, lima beans, navy beans, marine beans, army beans, whatever kind of beans you just bring them on. We'll get started on that goal as well. And um, so good things happening there. And... Um, also this week, um, oh, we've had a few deaths in our church, you know, passing on to heaven. Uh, Larry Allen's service was last Friday, and uh, that was a very good service, a good celebration to that. Larry Allen was such a loving man and just wanted a graveside service over at Sunland, and uh, just close family, and then it kind of grew. There was about 100 people there, and um, I had forgotten this. I had met with Larry, I think about a year ago, actually, and talked about his service, and one of the things he wanted me to do was play my guitar at the graveside service. I'd forgotten. And his son-in-law said, don't forget to bring your guitar. And I said, oh, what? <laughs> so, so we played, I played my guitar out of the Sunland Cemetery. And we've sang, I'll fly away. If you can picture that, 100 people just singing in the cemetery, I'll fly away. How very appropriate that was. So I appreciate that. I called that a New Orleans style of, of funeral service, celebrating uh, the passing on. Um, Esther Euring's service will be this coming Thursday at 1 o'clock. You may want to make note of that, uh, Esther Euring service. And uh, I also want to pray for the Washington State situation. Uh, this surprised me. I missed this right at first. There was a devastating mudslide, if you caught some of the news, and um, they're still putting things together. A number of people are still missing. Last I heard, the death count was about 20. Is, are we still right about there? But they're still missing people, so that could still go up much higher. So very concerned. Also, there's another round of um, whatever it is, asthma, allergies, virus going around. Uh, Dennis Madigan is ill again, just very sick. And uh, Carol Priester, our administrative assistant, has that as well. Uh, she's taking antibiotics. Hopefully, you'll be feeling better. Uh, but if you called this week and had the answer on the phone, something like, hello, can I help you? <laughs> Carol really was there. She just wasn't able to talk very well. Uh, so I want to pray for those that are not not feeling well in that regard. And this is the time of year also our snowbirds are starting to head back up north. And um, I'm always so sorry to see snowbirds go. Really, I miss you when you're gone. Uh, I'd like you to be here. Um, of course, the other side, that means there's no lines at the restaurants and the grocery store because everybody's gone, so it's easier to get in. Uh, we want to pray for our snowbirds that you have safe travel uh, back up to your northern destinations, wherever they may be. Let's take a moment. Let's just be silent before God, just being quiet and appreciate God's presence with us. You have a conversation you need to make with God right now. And just be open, just be honest, and just tell God how much you appreciate him and share your heart with our Lord. Our most holy Lord, our God. Lord, it's such a privilege to lift up worship to you and to praise you, to sing songs of praise that truly bring delight to you. Lord, it's our honor to do that. We kind of benefit to speak well of you and to boast of your goodness in this world and to appreciate all that you do for us, Lord. And it's a lot. 
Father, forgive us for the times when we take those blessings for granted. Forgive us those times we are presumptuous to think that we could demand anything from you. But let us be very assured to know that humbly we come before you, appreciating, being grateful for all your good blessings to us. Truly, Lord, we are thankful. Truly, we are glad to be part of your family in this world. We count that as honor, that we belong to you, O oh God. Father, lift up to you the prayer concerns we have. I pray be with the family of Larry Allen and, and be with his daughter Diane and, and Fran, her husband, just in their time of loss. Give that continual assurance that their father was a, a very righteous man, a very victorious man, and he's in your presence right now. We pray for the situation in Washington State with the mudslide and how awful that is, Lord. It's hard for us to comprehend even that families are waiting for news of missing loved ones and not being sure. There's no closure. Be with all those families. Be with the rescue workers. Give them diligent working. Lord, give them muscles that are still ready to keep going to resolve that terrible crisis there. We pray for uh, Wayne Uring, uh, the son of Esther, and Lord, as he's on his way back, I pray be with him. Be with all their friends and family and just bring them comfort in their time of grief. We pray for Dennis Madigan, just feeling very down with virus and Carol Priester dealing with uh, asthma and allergy issues. Lord, many others too that are struggling right now. I pray you come into their rooms, come into their homes. Be there for them, oh God. Comfort them, bring them assurance, bring them rest and peace and let them have a calm spirit before you knowing that you work wonderful things in the lives of your people. Father, once again, we worship you, O oh God. We praise you. We magnify your name over all of this world. How very wonderful it is to behold you in all of your grandeur. Lord, I pray that you'd make your presence a, a greater strength in our life day by day, that we are so aware of you and so conscious that you are with us, O oh God, leading us forward at all times. What a wonderful blessing have your care in our life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.